Look who didn't forget. <laughs> uh, six o'clock on the dot. Um, so we'll wait just a couple minutes for everybody else that's on way church time. So they'll be on here about 6.05, 6.10. Um, just to get going. Um, but started on time this week. This is me patting myself on the back. Um, I was excited about this one. God, God really had one uh, to give me for this so that I wouldn't, uh, I guess so I wouldn't forget. Um, but uh, I, I've got something that I want to share with you all. Um, I, I love you guys. Um, and, and I'm excited. Uh, I hope you're having a good week on this beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, it's been rainy and yucky, um, but it's uh, sunshine and bright now. Uh, hello. I'm glad you're all on. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the past couple days, um, I have been trying to run. Uh, run... Uh, long distances. Uh, I have gotten to where I can run a little over two miles without stopping at all. Um, and, I, and I did it one day and it was easy. And I did it another day and it was a lot harder. And I wanted to share with you, um, <laughs> I wanted to share with you the differences between those two days. Uh, one day I was going and Max wanted to go with me. He wanted to ride his bike alongside me. And he wanted to ride with me uh, just to watch me, to cheer me on. Um, and so, so he went with me, and, and I started running. And it wasn't five seconds into the run. Max is just right beside me going, you are doing so good, Daddy. Daddy, you are doing so good. You are running so I've never seen anybody run as good as you can run. This is the best run I've seen from anybody ever. You are such a good dad. You're such a good runner. You're just, you're just the best. And he kept that up the entire two miles. And so I'm sitting there running going, you know what? I'm okay. I am. I'm the best runner in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm amazing at running. This is, this is great. You know. And he was just really rooting me on the whole time. And then whenever we got home, I ran and I collapsed in the driveway when I got back he ran inside and he told my wife he told Charity he's like dad just ran two miles he's the greatest runner in the world there's never been an, an athlete that has been able to even compare to my dad he's the best and he was just really proud of me and uh, it made it easier to run the distance it seemed like it built my endurance uh, to be able to run two miles and have Max just cheering me on the whole time. You're the best, Dad. Dad, you're the best. I can't believe you're running this. You're doing so good. And uh, then the next day I ran, um, and and he didn't go with me. And so I ran by myself. And then, and about the same amount of time, about five seconds into the run, I was going, this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. I want to quit. I don't want to do this no more. I hate this. This is awful. Oh, I don't want to do it. But I kept going, and I didn't stop. I, I ran the two miles, but it was much, much, much harder. Um, and and what was the difference? The difference was encouragement. The difference was accountability. The difference was having somebody with me that wasn't wasn't going to leave me. That was that was depending on me to, to, to see my journey, to see me run my race. Uh, so when I ran my two miles with Max, it was a breeze. It wasn't, it wasn't no thing because he was cheering me on. Now, when I ran it without him by myself, I couldn't do it. it well, I, I did do it, but it was much, much harder. Um, so in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, starting in verse 1, Therefore, since we also have such a large, large crowd, cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You ever stopped and went, you know what, my faith is not what I need it to be. Um, how do I get it to where I need it to be? You call on the perfecter 
You call on the perfecter of your faith. You call on the perfecter of your faith to say, hey, I, my faith isn't what it was. It isn't what it needs to be. It isn't where I want it to be. God, will you perfect my faith? Keeping our eyes focused, right? The destination, where we're going, where we're heading. Keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. The source and perfecter of our faith. Because we're running and sometimes we feel like we're running alone. Uh, sometimes the race that we're we're running alongside and we're we're tackling it, it feels like we're doing it by ourselves. It feels like it's just us. Uh, but the Bible says that we have a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us. So let us lay aside every hindrance. That's every hindrance. That it, it says it, it doesn't say lay aside most of the hindrances. No, every hindrance. If it's in the way, if it's preventing you from, from if it's inhibiting your, your faith, if it's, if it's dragging your faith down, it's a, it's a hindrance. Get rid of it. Um, and let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. If you sin and you feel conviction over that and you feel bad for it, the Bible says that sin easily ensnares us. So that is even more reason that we have to stay focused. Stay focused. You know, I, I preached a couple weeks ago about how Jesus had to ascend. He had to, right? The ascension was essential. He had to ascend so that he could then send his Holy Spirit to be with us. Uh, if he didn't ascend to heaven, then we wouldn't have the, the Holy Spirit. And, and I, was, I, I was thinking about it. If he didn't ascend and we didn't receive the Holy Spirit, then that means that we would be living a life without conviction. And how terrifying and terrible of a world that would be. Can you imagine, can you imagine living your life and never being convicted? Never feeling bad. Never, never feeling guilty. Never feeling like what you did when you knew it was wrong was actually wrong. Can you imagine going through your life and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and just going, I don't really feel bad about it. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it. It would be a terrible, terrifying, horrible, horrible, horrible world to have a, a body of Christ without conviction. It's, it's terrifying. It's, it's, it's terrifying to think that if he didn't ascend, he didn't send his Holy, his Holy Spirit and we didn't have just that, not even the healing, not even the, the power of the Holy Spirit that lives with us, just, just that thought, just the thought of living a life without conviction. It's horrible. I mean, it's, it's, it's awful. And so I want to compare your life and the race that you're, you're running with having the Holy Spirit riding his bike beside you. But even better, he's in you. Right? The Holy Spirit right there with you going, stay focused. Stay focused on Jesus. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. Stay focused on Jesus. You're doing great. You have the power of the living God in you. You have the power that rose Jesus from the grave. You are doing it. You are going. Don't worry about that hindrance. Don't worry about that. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. And how awesome that is that we have that Holy Spirit. But also, do you have someone in your life that you're cheering on like that? Do you have somebody that you are discipling? Because if you don't have anybody that you're discipling, if you don't have somebody that you are feeding into with that much attention and, and fervor and just effort, then we're doing it wrong. We need to find people to live, to be pouring into, to be, be, be pouring into, because we're running races and we need the help. We need, we need the, the brothers and sisters uh, that, that love us to not just love us from afar, but to be loving us uh, by cheering us on, to be, to be cheering us on. And if you don't have somebody uh, cheering you on and you feel like you're alone, reach out. Reach out. Reach out, reach out, reach out. I guarantee you it's not because uh, people have abandoned you. It, it, that's not what it is. People are, are looking for people to, to disciple. And you're calling out for needing help 
is just you being honest and, you, and somebody else is going to go, you know what, me too, I need help too. I, I feel tired. I feel like I need Jesus to perfect my faith. And then you two gain uh, a bond together as you grow in Christ because you both were honest and open and saying, hey, I need some help. There's been times where I've had to reach out uh, to Paul and just been like, look, I'm off. Something's, something's off and I, I need help. I need help. I need, I need the perfecter of my faith, you know, will you help me pray for what's going on in my life? Um, and, and that's, it happened. And, and, and I've had people reach out to me. Uh, but, but, you know, we've got a large cloud of witnesses, a large cloud of witnesses, uh, believers and unbelievers alike that are watching us run. They're watching us on our race. They're watching us, um, try to reach our destination. Um, so what's your endurance like? How how uh, how fit do you feel? Do you feel like you're in shape um, spiritually? Do you feel like you know what I'm gonna take off running, and and, and I'm not stopping until I I reach uh, the arms of Jesus? If you don't feel like that, if you feel like uh, your endurance is low, then call out, call out on the source of your faith, the source of the energy, the source of 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 what lives in you, that Holy Spirit that lives in you, the perfecter of your faith. And, and let him perfect you. Let him perfect your faith. Um, for the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. At the end of the race, at the end of the race, at the finish line, we get to rest. And we get to rest in him. Um, I, I hope that this has helped you. I hope that that you guys are, are are running your race. If you feel like you've taken a water break and you're you're tired and you just needed a a, a break, that's okay. But we got to keep going. We got to keep going now more than ever. Now more than ever. Um, so reach out to those who who you feel like you should be discipling. Reach out to those who you feel like you should be cheering on. Who who are on your heart to be the ones that. You, you cheer for and if you don't have anybody that's 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 doing that for you reach out I'll do it I'll do it right now and put in the comments right now if you'll do it I guarantee you watch if it's you if you're the one that's saying hey I don't feel like I have anybody watch these comments fill up watch these comments fill up that says I'll do it I'll do it call on me here I am Lord send me Put it in the comments if you're willing to take it up and, and cheer somebody on today. Just to show the, the body of Christ that you're willing, that you're ready. Um, I love you guys. See, there's one. There's one, I, and, and I know there's more where that came from. Um, but run your race. Uh, keep the faith. Uh, keep your endurance up. And uh, at the finish line, I'll see you there. Right? I'll see you at the finish line where we get to rest in Him. Um, and so... Just keep running. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. I love you guys. I love you guys. Uh, I love you guys. In Jesus' name, go.